Hey, boxing fans, welcome to another edition of Boxing For Real. I'm your host, Don Omega, Iron Truth with me, back for another one. Let's go. Okay, we're talking about upcoming fights this weekend. Looks like we got Jose Miguel Cotto returning against Ivan Hernandez. Um, this isn't the Hernandez yeah. that fights at 122, just so you know. Yeah. It's another Hernandez. With well, a very similar record, too. <laughs> very similar record. Uh, but, anyhow, hopefully Miguel, Jose Miguel, the brother, brother of yeah. Miguel Cotto, the good one, can yeah. um, get back on the winning track. He just came off a loss with Juan Diaz. Juan Diaz no shame in that. No. He's a great fighter, and uh, maybe Cotto can be a really Better decent fighter. fighter. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what he's got. Uh, he should knock this guy out pretty quick, or maybe mid rounds. You know, he's not that much of a one punch guy. But Cotto's right. got some very good skills. Uh, good. He does everything real well. Nothing like absolutely spectacular, but he's got all the tools to do something. Um, I was surprised by his loss to Diaz. I picked him I to beat Diaz. But, I picked um, Diaz. Yeah, and uh, Diaz is a good fighter and so is Cotto so hopefully Cotto can rebound and he can do something so that's going to be on Telefutura for this week. Also this week Anthony Peterson fighting uh, just another fight for him to get a win in look good in yeah. and it's going to be in Tennessee with, under the Prize, Prize fight, fight Promotions, Judah Zab Judas Promotional Super Promotions yeah. Team company up. joining up so check that out. Good fighter, good prospect, up and coming guy. Yeah. Also off TV, Edwin Valero and Vicente Mosquera are going. Mosquera are going to be fighting each other. This looks like it could really be a good fight. Yeah. And they're not going to show it. Valero, of course, the guy that uh, the Venezuelan guy that's not allowed to fight in the U.S. because of a BS test of some kind, medical test. Yeah. And he's fought all these fights overseas. He's 19 to 0, 19 knockouts. One fight went to the second round. All the rest all the, first. All first the rest round. first round. Yeah. And he was very ashamed that the um, <laughs> fight went yeah. to the second round. And this guy is an explosive fighter. I guess. And <laughs> he must, <laughs> must and be. <laughs> Vincente Mascara, 24 1 and 1 with 12 knockouts. Um, not as explosive, clearly, Obviously. but um, it should still be a good fight. Not Wish showing it. We would see it, but we won't. Sorry. you got to look online for that fight yeah. somewhere. Valero, I'll, I'll go with Valero. Never seen him fight, unfortunately, but, um, you know, hopefully they start showing him soon here. Uh, don't care where he fights, just show him here at least so we can see him. So yeah. anybody has those fights out there of him. That could be a pick em fight, who knows? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, we really don't know. So I hope Valero wins. He looks like a good fighter. So If you can watch it, watch it. Yeah, yeah definitely. And send us a copy somehow. <laughs> also, the big fights this weekend, Ike Corte versus Vernon Forrest. Yeah. Um, yeah, great big, fight. Big crossroads fight. Yeah. Uh, Great fight. Ike Corte, of course, returning after years off. Five years, yeah. And Vernon Forrest has been pretty inactive himself over the last couple of years since. Um, My Olga fights. Yep. Took and two years off before coming back with two wins. His last fight was October against Elko Garcia. He knocked him out, and he also fought on the July card with Hopkins Taylor 1 in 2005. Anyway, this is going to be a very interesting fight. I'm going with Corte because Corte is better than Mayorga in every way, and Mayorga was able to beat Forrest twice. Uh, Corte does hit harder. He's at a bigger weight class, for one thing, and Corte just has all-around better skills than Mayorga, of course. Don't, I, I think their skills are pretty much even between Forrest and Corte, but Corte's just got that power, and I'm going to pick Corte with a late-round knockout of Forrest. I'm actually going to go with Forrest in this fight. I think... Um Basically, I'm going on, I think, banking on Corte being more battle-tested, more battle-tattered than Vernon Forrest. Forrest's only real big battle where he was beat up was the two Mayorga fights, and especially the first Mayorga fight, while Corte has been in some wars out there. Yeah, Vargas, Vargas beat on him for 12 rounds. De La Hoya, De La Hoya was a back-and-forth fight, but De La Hoya uh, took... De La Hoya dished out some good punishment on Corte. Could have been stopped in the 12th round. Probably really should have been. I think Forrest will use his height to his advantage and his reach, and I think he'll um, utilize that and just... I, I think they're, what, a 
about the same age, right? Yeah, the same um, age, not about 34, 35, yeah. And and the, not enough for it to be an advantage, no. but Forrest has had some easier fights than Corte, okay. and that's what I'm banking on, that he'll just be less battle-worn, I guess. We'll have to see. And I'll, I'll, take, great. I'll take Forrest either late, late-round knockout or a decision. Yeah. Okay. Are really leaning toward the city. Yeah, I can't see Forrest knocking Corte out. Definitely. I could see it, but I don't think it'll happen. Yeah. Okay, and on the undercard, a great fight also in the junior middleweight division. Kasim Uma against Saku Powell. Powell is undefeated. Uh, this is a huge, huge step up for him. If he can somehow come away with this win, then he will elevate himself to the top of the top of the 154 somewhat at the top of the 154 pound division and be in line for some very big fights. I don't think he's going to do it. I think he'll put up a very good effort against Uma and he'll gain some good stock with this, but I think Uma will beat him clearly. By, I, I'm going to go with a decision for Uma. I'm going to say knockout for Uma. I think, he'll, um, I think he just throws his hands way too fast, way too accurately. Throws so much punches too, so many. <laughs> This fight will probably have more punches thrown yeah. and landed than the forest Corte fight, although both look to be exciting fights, no yeah. doubt. Can't wait. But this fight, I think, will have uh, Uma throws like 100 punches around yeah. on average. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as long as he comes out doing that, as long as he doesn't come into this fight like the Amazon fight, yeah. uh, it's going to be a good one. Definitely check this out. This could be a fight of the year type of fight. Both fights could be on yeah, this card. Really yeah, could. Definitely. Both of you. This is really a good card. card. This was great putting this together. Yeah. And really looking forward to it. I'm I'm going with Uma. I I don't even know. I just think he'll knock him out. I'm going to say about eighth or ninth round. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and also on off TV bouts. Off TV. Unfortunately. Yep. We have Jadon Codrington fighting Carl Daniels, the veteran who uh, his Chin Chechen partner just beat last eight, uh, this April, actually. Stevens beat him by decision, knocked him down in the first round, looked like he had him out. Carl Daniels is a tough guy, tough veteran. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, of course, knocked him out in ten rounds. Chad Dawson, the up-and-coming light heavyweight, knocked him out, I think, in seven rounds like two years ago. Anyway, hopefully Codrington can get a great look and knockout against uh, Daniels. Should. Yeah, and um, hopefully he wins. Unfortunately, they're not showing it again, of course. But also, Andre Berto is going to be on the card. He's a up-and-coming 154-pound fighter, uh, fighting somebody just to showcase fight for him to look great in, which I'm sure he will. He's got all the tools to become a great fighter. So to that at least I hope if nothing else they throw these on a Broadway boxing card. That that's what they should do at least. They, I mean, develop, promote yeah, these guys. That would be perfect. Yeah, and also want to mention one thing about Curtis Stevens. I yes. saw the fight uh, last night. Actually, they replayed it on the uh, on Broadway boxing on one of the Comcast channels, whatever. Uh, Stevens Stevens was really hurting this guy throughout the fight, and. Um, this guy had to go to the hospital afterwards because he was pissing blood because of the beating Stevens laid on him. And uh, Stevens was dominating the fight. He did get caught. He did get hurt in the eighth round with an uppercut. He was wobbly. But then he gained himself. He gathered his composure. He was on the ropes throwing back. And then the guy had him tied up. Marcos Primera is the guy's name. I keep saying the guy. It doesn't really matter. But um, anyway, he was hitting Stevens continuously while he had him kind of held to where Stevens couldn't defend himself. Stevens just was like kind of just looking at him like, yeah, this is nothing. And the referee stopped the fight. Stevens didn't put up a protest as much as I thought he should have. He was just basically very calm about it. But I don't think that was because he was hurt. He didn't look really hurt. This was a bad stoppage. Um, by the way, there was no riot at all, like the reports were saying. Uh, Stevens and Codrington have been banned from New York for like 30 days. Uh, apparently Codrington has it because he's fighting this week in Madison <coughs> Square Garden. I don't know what that's about, but there was no riot. They just made that up completely, unless they just didn't show it on camera. But I don't see that really happening. Anyway, hopefully there's a rematch with Stevens and Primera in October. Like they're saying it will be, and Stevens can knock him out and move on. So. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance yeah. to see that yet. I don't get those Comcast channels. Uh, 
And they, you know, uh, you know, he made them piss blood. Come on. More Thanks more for checking us out. Remember, he knows boxing for real at gmail.com. Uh, Omegafightstuff.com. Yeah, come on.